in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Please lift your hands and give him all the praise. Father, we bless you. We give you all the praise. Everywhere, inside and outside, please let's lift our hands and acknowledge him. Recognize his faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your faithfulness. Shababakuratabaya. You are a helper in this place. You are the fountain of wisdom. Distant shores and the islands will see your love as it rises. Just that part. Distant shores and the islands will see your love as it rises for me. Distant shores. Sing it as a prophecy tonight. Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Sing. Distant shores and the islands will sing your life. As it rises upon me, just the voices. Distant shores and the islands. It's not a song, it's a prophecy. As it rises upon me. Distant shores. Their kings will come with their treasures. Their nobles will come in awe of God's hand upon your life. As it rises on me. Distant shores. They will come from the north. They will come from the south. They will come from the east. They will come from the west. I tell you, as it rises up, distant shores. Your life. Two more times from the depth of your spirit. And the island to see. One more time. Peace and show. Your life. Turn it into a prayer. Kings are coming, nobles are coming. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice.
and prophesy upon yourself. Kalaba shabara tabala kabaya. Mande bratas kalabarias kabarende go shabala dabai. My life is an awe to kings and nobles. They come with their treasures. They come to acknowledge the hand of God upon my life. Regardless of my background, regardless whatever is not working or working in my life, I know that I'm rising. Gentiles must come to my light, the kings to the brightness of my rising. There is this treasure in every vessel. There is this treasure. Eastern shores and the islands will see your light. Eastern shores. Eastern shores. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Praise your name. I have no fear. I want tomorrow. Babe. I leave, I leave, I leave. To praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings because we are standing on a mystery. I live to praise your name. There's no fear again. I Unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Oh, celebrate my King in this place. Hey, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, He's dependable God. Your name, 
him means to recognize that he's the reason why you are what you are where you are don't ever be careless about this in all your ways lord if anybody sees any wisdom in my life is because of you i wish i could sing the song i'm acknowledging you for Acknowledging you for who you are, dance like you are, dance like you are. I'm acknowledging you for who you are, for what you do in my life. I'm acknowledging you for who you are, dance like you are, dance like you are. Baba, Baba, oh, Baba, Baba, oh, 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 Baba, oh, Baba, oh, 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 even in my heart, even in my soul, Jehovah believed that in my life today. Even in my heart, even in my soul, Jehovah believe in my life today. Baba oh, Baba, Baba oh, hey, Baba oh, 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 Baba, 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 Baba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, as a family, we say thank you. There is not one of us who has what it takes to produce results. If there is anything in our lives, if there is anything in this ministry that is worthy of commendation, we declare that it is because of you. We are not ashamed to declare your faithfulness. 
you are our helper Ebenezer the Lord who has helped us for you are holy righteous and worthy my God I lift you high be lifted high be lifted high oh Lord I lift you high for you are holy Something mighty in your life. God is building something powerful in your life. God is making mighty men in this place. And He won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like Him. He won't stop. No, He won't stop till your life looks like him let me prophesy to you again god is raising mighty warriors in this place god is raising men of honor in this place he is raising men of influence in this place my god is raising men of power in this place you may cry but he won't stop till your life looks like him you may weep but he won't stop till your life looks like him when it's over when it's over when it's over when it's over suddenly you look like him suddenly you talk like him suddenly you walk like him suddenly you heal like him he's raising me in this place he's raising your finances in this place he's raising your anointing in this place he won't stop he won't stop to we look just like him please don't stop never stop till we look just like you never stop never stop till we look just like he's raising men of fire in this place he's raising men of vision in this place he's raising Men of wisdom in this place. He's showing his mysteries in this place. And he won't stop. No, he won't stop. So it looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. So your life looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. So his bride looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Listen, he won't stop, he won't stop till your life looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till your life looks like him. Listen, let me start tonight with a word of encouragement to someone. I don't care how your life is, you are a project that God is working on, line upon line precept upon precept sometimes you may cry as the word comes 
sometimes you may wish the training stops but he won't stop please don't stop till your church looks like you never stop please don't stop till your bride looks like you never stop never stop till our lives look like you never stop never stop till our lives look like you. so hold on yeah, my encouragement hold on god is working oh, oh yeah. you may be discouraged hold on you may so when he's over, 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 suddenly you look like him, suddenly you talk like him, suddenly you love him, suddenly you rule like him. For the sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you when he's done with you. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. For the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright When Yahweh binds up the wounds in your life When He heals all the bruises inflicted by this world Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy, listen, to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. I reckon that for now, there are things that don't look like it yet. You are praying but you've not seen the answer. You are fasting but there's nothing in your life you have a church and your church looks like a shop because nothing is happening he won't stop he won't stop till your life looks like him take this as a prophecy tonight till your life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till your life looks like him please don't stop never stop till my life looks like you please don't stop no don't stop till my life lord i may cry but please don't stop till my life looks like you i may be tired but please don't stop till my life he won't stop Till our lives look like him. He'll never stop. Till our lives look like him. Never stop. Till my life looks like him. Hallelujah. Lord, we believe in you. We believe in you we trust where you are taking us and we ask that you will take us there in the name of jesus christ lord let our tears not stop you let our fatigue not stop you let our human weariness not stop you let not even our unbelief stop you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'd like you to walk up to 10 people just prophesy to them tell them you are a wonder on your way to happen go ahead
Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. We will all be very great in this life. But the best part of it is that we will all know ourselves. Hallelujah. You see, every leader, please listen. Every leader, whether in church setting, has an assignment. Praise the Lord. Human beings are like, please pay attention, human beings are like computers. Now, that's not an insult. I just want to explain something to you. Human beings are like gadgets. Only a leader knows what they will become because God revealed it to him. Are we together? The people have an idea of what they are to become, but they don't have it clearly and they don't know how to get there. Every true leader is a leader only because he has seen the end. Are we together now? The job of the leader is to be able to lead the people. Their job is to trust him enough and follow him. So the first assignment of everybody who wants to follow a leader is to probe the life of that leader until you think he's worthy of your loyalty and trust. Because it's risky to follow a leader who doesn't know where he's going. He will take you anywhere, dump you there. Are we together? So the Bible says, without vision, the people perish. The word perish there is they miss their direction. They cast off restraint. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me announce to you that God is taking you somewhere. Are we together? I want you to trust, please listen, listen. Trust, trust the teachings that you are receiving. Don't just agree with them mentally. Trust it. It says, trust in the Lord, right? Believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets. Not just, no. Believe that the person God has placed in your life by grace has an idea on how to take you to where you need to go and you receive the truth you see the problem with many of us is we are not receptive to the word we listen to it and compare it with what we know and if they tally we believe it if it does not tally we dump it away there are so many people you see let me tell you something I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday. Anywhere you see consistent result, there is understanding producing it. Are we together now? Please, I need your attention. Anywhere you see consistent results, there is understanding. It's not guesswork. It's not magic. It's not some charm. There is an intentional operation. Please, my man, come. Let me use him. You're looking beautifully dressed with your tie. Oh, this is lovely. Don't you think so? This is beautiful. You can dress like this on your wedding day, and I'm telling you, you are dear. You are perfect. This is, this is it. Praise the Lord. Sam, please come. Let me use these guys. I mean, these my people today are looking superb. Learn to celebrate good things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Poor people and mediocres fight and resent good things. You know, that spirit is dead here permanently. It was buried by me personally. Learn to celebrate nice things. Now, Maman, you knotted this tie, right? Yes, sir. Can you do it again? Yes, sir. Sam, can you knot your tie again? Yes, sir. Were you in the same room when you were knotting your ties? But the ties are knotted. Because there is a principle that has nothing to do with the person. It is a law. There is a way you turn this rope you later call tie and it looks beautiful like this. 
so he was doing it in his house or in his room sam was doing it in his own house they had the same result no witch stopped it no demon stopped it are we together they can do it every week because it is built on principles this is how i want your life to run such that you may be in Aquaibom, you may be in zamfara it makes no difference as far as you see the laws of god has equal value everywhere it's not like naira and dollar it's not like petrol it's not like all of these things it has equal value everywhere he told cain if you do what is right will your sacrifice not be accepted i don't reject it because your name is cain you are violating something listen your journey every man of god every man of god when you get people born again by the spirit and open them up to the ministry of the holy spirit the next thing the very next thing is to begin to guide them change their mindsets pray for one minute prophesy lord i understand what is happening to me hallelujah hallelujah god bless you please sit down these two guys and another example this guy is called a christian brother a this is christian brother b are we together both of them came to jesus christ genuinely confessed his lordship he lives in their hearts he lives in their hearts but the quality of their lives are we together and the possibilities that can be produced from their lives become different because this brother got born again and he was planted in a church where the man of god though well-meaning is just guessing around whatever he feels like teaching i was telling the school of ministry students today he feels like teaching on rapture next week he teaches on relationship the next week he teaches on certain kinds of mysteries have hazard informations whereas this brother had the opportunity to be planted under a very visionary pastor who understands where he is taking him are we together at the end of two years you bring them together and this guy is well-meaning jesus is still lord over his life but there is no victory in any area of his life there is no operation of the spirit at work in him he's familiar with a lot of christian terminologies but there is complete barrenness in his life whereas this other brother has moved forward because informations move people forward something he did not know he's now receiving let me just give us a background before i go into the teaching of tonight listen school of ministry students just allow me to take a little of your lectures and just bring to the house i want you to know this especially if you're a man of god members only receive about 20 percent of the information that is communicated to them are you following me now the smartest member in any congregation cannot at the first instance of any teaching assimilate more than 20 percent of what is really taught so while you hear people say mm, preach preacher are we together and while we as men of god keep fooling ourselves thinking we are impressing people with mysteries we coin scriptures and greek and hebrew words and at the end of it the people are dazzled they get up and they shake and we think we are moving forward let me assure you the lifespan of that noise is not more than one week they will hear something else that's why you pastors teach members how to reign in certain dimensions but when they stand in real life situations they make foolish decisions do you know why because something here did not take one salmon to be wrong it took their entire growing up process a mindset a thinking 
so don't you think you will come with just one sermon renew your mind and people say in the name of jesus i'm tired of this mind to mean that they are free oh no no the word of god must be taught systematically there are three dimensions of assimilation i was teaching the school of ministry students the first level is awareness any information you hear trust me the first encounter with it is only awareness you really have not understood it although you will argue let me tell you what awareness is all about awareness is like um information stored in a system but random are we together so the information is in you but it's random it's scattered it cannot be filed and produced when it is appropriate that is the reason why many students read they read two days to the exam they go to the exam hall and they remember this formula is in my head but whether it's five is five up or down i cannot exactly understand because you see the mind is like a machine are you getting what i'm saying now because you were only aware of the information later on you will remember but you do not have the power to remember it when you want because it's still at the level of awareness so you are learning tithing you are learning on the anointing you are learning on the ministry of the holy spirit you think you have gotten it but it's still in the realm of awareness the second level is called understanding where the logic and the principle behind that operation now enters into your spirit so you are no longer just aware of the information you understand it it says in all thy getting get understanding are we together now there are things in my life i thought i had gotten i would have argued but in recent times i'm looking at them and i'm surprised i'm like my goodness so what did i think i got that's why you must be very meek in the presence of god is god speaking to us understanding the third level and that's where god is taking us is mastery everybody say mastery the third level is mastery at that point the, the revelations have become a stronghold in your mind you cannot undo it again it has become part of your convictions that's the realm of settled faith you are not jacking yourself into believing that reality he said but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded persuaded You may be like this brother or this person in this place tonight this gentleman comes to church with his philosophies let's go to church i'm a christian let me go and hear what god has to say and when the message is going on he looks at people writing and he feels guilty he says bros you have two barrels he collects it because he does not even understand why people write it is not a revelation to him he's just embarrassed that in a whole row he's the only one not writing and he says let me write what did they even say ecclesiastes he just put dash 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 he's not he's not even conscious of the information he's writing whereas someone is sitting like a sponge waiting for every truth and he's writing are we together now this is this brother like many of us we come to god with our stumbling blocks our mindsets our ideologies so many pastors so many people business leaders many all kinds of ideas and then as though we came to watch a cinema let's hear what god has to say and then when one looks impressive he said guy that's smart the other one said eh, do i exactly agree no only a fool argues with the word of god the word of god is supposed to be like a hammer in your life when it comes let it crush everything that does not have stamina in your life and give way refuse to have loyalty to wrong ideologies don't hold on to them because of the solidarity of how long they have been in your life that that's the information you've known all your life does not mean you are right 
are we together be like the other brother your heart receptive oh i'm a man of god but i know there is more i'm a businessman but i know there is more i'm a leader but i know there is more i've seen the anointing of god in my life but i know there is more i have seen myself operating the prophetic but i know this this cannot be it this can't be it god is so much bigger than this he's calling us deeper 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 he's calling us deeper hallelujah any church any pastor any man of God that is not committed to teaching his members the principles not stories are we together not opinions the principle you change men by changing their convictions you change men by altering their convictions you change men by altering their convictions a man cannot change if his convictions doesn't change a man cannot change if his thinking is still the same so the word of god comes to you and begins to propose a new life you have lived this life but I show you a more excellent way. It's up to you to believe God enough. Or argue it. Let me tell you something. I have watched, and, and sometimes we discuss it, especially in recent times with Ejimi. I have watched with shock how very ignorant people, ignorant pastors, ignorant leaders, ignorant businessmen argue with those who have results. To me, I define that as the highest level of pride. I will never argue with a man who has results. When I stand before people whose lives I greatly admire, my heart at once, I take up all that title, apostle, so, so, so and so, and I sit down. When I see a man communicating a dimension of reality I have not seen in my life, I dare not argue. I listen and i listen sincerely it doesn't mean i receive everything but i listen i listen without any sense of cynicism i lay my golden crowns thank god for the little i know but i want to know more and i must be meek because the lesser is blessed of the greater colleagues don't bless themselves they advise themselves are we together nah. that that foolish thinking that is eating the body of christ that makes everybody come and then you say oh let me listen oh sam this is i'm impressed you see an ignorant man listen to a pastor who spends two hours teaching something that can change his life and at the end he comes to the person and says wow very nice the ignorant man will not say my goodness you changed my life can I have your tapes? Can I establish any strategic alliance with you? Everybody say, I'm becoming wise. Say it, I'm becoming wise. Give me anybody, and I say this with all due respect. Give me anybody, any two people. Any two people at all. All I need from any of them is a teachable heart. A truly teachable heart bring this guy from london with the little knowledge he knows bring this guy from my village somewhere are we together bring two of them to me let this guy have a teachable heart genuinely teachable let this guy have an arrogant heart give me six months believe me when i tell you six months of thorough mentorship six months with, with a heart that is malleable i will produce a wonder 
you compare them after six months their difference is like light and darkness that's what is happening to some of us but the problem is some of us are not paying attention we are not seeing what God is doing never come to the presence of God just to worship to fall down to stand up and to leave there is a measure of transformation happening to you line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little then your life is changing changing your thinking is changing all of a sudden you were somebody who would not even comb your hair but you are a prayer warrior are we together you've never seen the relevance of a comb something about the spirit of excellence touches you and you say if i add a good prayer life to character and comb my hair well is that not an added advantage are we together all of a sudden you find out that you are a prayer warrior but you are poor and broke and every door finance is closed and then the word of god is coming at first let me tell you how you will react because most likely the people who taught you how to pray may not teach you to pay attention to finances so it doesn't matter let me just be serious with god god will reward me for my prayer but as the word of god comes you will find out that one truth in the kingdom does not replace the other you can excel in one dimension and still fail in another he made many lights but he made two great lights there's not just one light the kingdom of god is made up of systems your understanding of the operation in any system will deliver the results for you so that you are living in divine health does not guarantee prosperity that you are rich does not guarantee a healthy spiritual life are, are we together now yeah so the word of god keeps balancing you you now begin to understand the systems of god say the systems of god please say it again the systems of god yes there are different departments of spiritual operation there is the economy of the kingdom there is the economic system of the kingdom are we together there is the governmental system of the kingdom right there are systems in the kingdom there are operations that are responsible for the delivery of the anointing dramatic proportions of grace upon the life of a man there are possibilities of god that can activate your finances you can master god's economy there is another dimension that can make you excel when you understand god's concept and idea of relationships then you will be a successful person spiritually then you will be a millionaire multi-millionaire are we together then you will be an award-winning husband or wife with the ability to train children then you will be kingdom driven and not carried away by those things that is a complete man that is a picture of the true bride of christ anything short of this order is like taking the four legs of a table and you stand on just one how long can you stand you were designed to stand on two hallelujah pray a prayer point right now quickly and say lord expose to me my areas of ignorance i am willing to receive pray thank you, thank you guys thank you please pray expose oh god unto me the areas of ignorance in my life i'm not too arrogant to receive your word i'm not too proud i'm a great businessman i'm a great man of god but lord i tremble at your word i'm not part of those who argue with your word my heart is open because the word of god has the ability of influencing my mind it can change me it's my bailout from a bad background it's my bailout from a life of suffering it's my bailout from a life of carnality expose unto me hallelujah are you following me now are we together there is an area in your life where you have not tapped into the understanding of the laws of the kingdom it may be in the area of excellence 
you have not gotten a revelation that personal excellence is a language in the school of success you may not know you are a sincere person are we together so you don't pay attention to being excellent whether your shoe is polished or not you don't care all you know is god be glorified whether your shirt is ironed or not you don't care are we together now yes you don't pay attention to those details because you think they are carnal then the word of god begins to come and says in addition to your spiritual alignment begin to learn these principles then you learn them you start applying it to your business are we together whereas before customers will come and stand outside yes who is there and he, ah, i came to buy milk how much you don't know how much you are losing because of that wrong mindset all of a sudden you take the spirit of excellence to your business you are a prayer warrior but something is changing your mind and because you are receptive you now arrange tables employ one person as a receptionist when customers come you now greet them hello you are welcome and they are surprised ah bros you don't change they are trying to bring you back to yesterday and you forbid it i've been excellent please you can sit down sir how may we help you and the person squares up himself and says, I'm impressed. Where is your manager? Oh, he's busy, but I will get to him. Um, if there's anything I can do to make your life comfortable, please, I will. The person calls his friend and says, Bros, you want to travel to Lagos, whereas, I mean, there's somebody who is here and willing to help you. That business connection, come. Are we together? Excellence. You have taken it to your business. All of a sudden, a sudden you've taken it to your academics. Your notebooks are no longer in your pocket. You don't fold them like a thief and put it in your pocket. The spirit of excellence is influencing your life. All of a sudden, you realize I'm 26. I'm no longer a child. I need to start behaving well. All this dressing, wearing a shirt as if one, one torn shirt, no singlet inside. You've never considered buying singlet. You sag your trouser. The belt has caught. All kinds of things have happened. You just move around and you suddenly sit down and say, ah, God bless me with 10,000. Let me buy at least two nice shirts. One nice trouser. I found out that I am 27. I don't have a suit. But I bought food for 10 ladies and none of them liked me. Let me go and get a suit. The spirit of excellence is changing you. You no longer find yourself among those who are gossiping and gisting. They just come around. You start speaking not like where you are but like where god is taking you to are we together somebody come have you heard he says not necessary please i my time is allocated I say, ah, ah, which one is all this time time thing say no 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 i realize that there is a graph in this life i have come out of my morning face and i'm not yet prepared so i'm catching up i really appreciate if you don't become a distraction to me right now all of a sudden let me tell you what will happen heavy persecution which is a sign that you are doing something right because your status quo the people in your environment are now uncomfortable with you they will interpret your transformation as pride but give them time they will go and give you chance for the real ones to come you are switching realms are we together all of a sudden you used to be lazy and carnal when we're in rome behave like romans do when we are broke we call any military officer but the word of god is coming nevertheless the foundation of the lord standard show are we together yeah. now it becomes a conviction and your friends say kai are we not traveling to abuja this weekend and say no it's over i'm over with this life i made up my mind that i want to be a woman of virtue and excellence and they say i bet you after everybody has left with you and then you tell them the bible says remember not the former things nor consider the things of old I may have lived in ignorance but now that I know I'm determined then he calls you and you pick your call and say sir I appreciate you but something has been happening in my life recently don't say I won't come like before no explain why you will never go again so that he will know that you are not confused it's a decision I've made your life is changing you used to be arrogant and and very rude to elderly people but then you are learning right now that there is something called the law of honor. 
all of a sudden you step down and you see your mother and you greet she's carrying something and you say mama let me help you say ah, i thought you were a pastor you say no that's why i'm carrying this because i'm a pastor you say, i thought pastors are big men you say no i have learned that leaders are servants not bosses you lead by servanthood something is changing if this is not happening to you you are wasting your time in koinonia what can you see in your life has the spirit of excellence come upon you have you started washing the plates as soon as you finish eating or is still there one week like before there's no excellence are we together now yes have you started paying attention to details help me sir do you have a good notebook where you can document your persuasion or you still have pieces of papers you move around and chuck in your pocket when you go to churches do you sit down and listen to the man of god with your heart open disregarding the imperfections and looking for jesus in that church or do you still go and you say this man of god is not like my church this guy cannot even speak english very well our apostle used to wear suit what is this guy wearing like this so you don't listen have you dropped that attitude of cynicism where it's no longer my church or koinonia or kingdom if this is not happening to you you are not changing has your prayer life improved by revelation not by guilt not by guilt where joshua selman preached and said if you are not praying three hours you are not a christian i just say ah god no, let's do it you put alarm clock and you can't wait the moment it does bam you say go oh god that's all I'm, I'm done no but by revelation he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray because by revelation you have been given insight of what your prayer life does so on tuesday while you are lazy you would still come to the prayer department four o'clock you are on your way to rema why because i must build my spirit is it comfortable no it's not about comfort every man who strives for mastery must strive lawfully lawfully according to the rules my spiritual development requires fasting do i want to fast no but i do it out of love for christ and the discipline that will build me you are growing whereas you would have been the one before who will argue with anybody people are persecuting you and you are trying to explain no it's not like that it's really did i shout at you am i not a nice person now you have learned that only those behind you backbite those in front cannot backbite because they are focusing and moving forward and so you use those criticisms as stepping stones not stumbling blocks you have grown your self-worth has been so stable with the word of god you may not have all the money in your pocket but nobody can preach you into thinking inferior and it's not about saying i'm not this there is a settled confidence i am wonderfully and fearfully made are we together different dimensions of the kingdom all of a sudden you start committing yourself to tithe you start your tithing and the first one month is as if you are going to die you are hungry you are looking at that envelope you can eat it and nobody will know and ask god for forgiveness after after squandering the tithe. but you tell yourself i'm no longer going to be a child i must grow and you are moving you are not seeing results but you know that as surely when a farmer plants he must reap you know it will come my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god my secret place is calling you oh god my heart is calling you Hallelujah. whereas you a man of god your concept of ministry is to brag around looking for titles are we together hopping from one church to another hopping from the house of one rich member to the other bringing all kinds of prophecy are we together now 
arranging all kinds of people buy suit for me buy shoe for me my birthday is coming next year buy shoe for me all of a sudden you hear the word that ministry is not done that way ministry is about service with thorough integrity the willingness to be word compliant at any cost all of a sudden you find out wow whereas i'm doing ministry today and then occasionally i can go and watch pornography although i'm doing ministry occasionally i can go and drink i can watch this and you are finding out look I, it's time for me to be a true man of god it's time for me to be genuine it's time for me to be true are we together now and you go on a retreat i'm attacking the spirit of pornography i'm attacking the spirit of masturbation i'm attacking the spirit of immorality and drunkenness these are things that nobody may know yet but it's still at work and god is giving you opportunity and you go before his presence Kabarakata. i'm going far god this thing must die we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you i wait on you lord i wait on you sing it just one more time we wait on you are we together so there is a mindset you have as a lady you come before god but there is a mindset you have you are born again but there is a mindset of desperation i can do anything for a man i can do anything for a rich man then all of a sudden you start receiving the word that there ought to be only one person who your life and allegiance should be pledged jesus christ the son of god and now that revelation is meeting your wrong mindset are we together now oh i thought it was right to have 10 boyfriends 20 girlfriends and then be receiving money from this one when this one is broke this one is just receiving breakthrough i can alternate but now i'm learning do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man so well that he shall reap and you tell yourself it comes to an end i'm ready to settle down is god speaking to us that's the word working in you it's changing it may not be comfortable but all of a sudden you are learning your mother taught you not to listen to any man any man that talks give it back to him that's my daughter that's what they taught you and all of a sudden joshua selman attacks that rubbish and tells you no a meek and a temperate spirit is a woman's original design anything outside that produces a beast wives submit yourselves are we together and then the brothers come with their own mindset to i am the boss and then i teach them husbands love your wives not the way culture taught you as christ loved the church there is a standard it's not given to your personal opinion Your life is changing all of a sudden you turn and your world is changing like day and night you go back and do ministry with integrity no lying no prophesying to anybody and say drop ten thousand naira and i speak a prophecy no all of a sudden it may be popular but you change completely you don't criticize people you don't argue and tear down any man's ministry but you preserve truth as far as your work is concerned Lord, if it means me living in hunger and teaching your truth, I will walk in that integrity. Hallelujah. Whereas you're a man of God who will never pray and prepare your sermons. You just get up and do anything you want to do. All of a sudden, you learn that a minister, ministry is trust from God, supervised by God. All your prayer life is just about give me tea, give me bread. All of a sudden, you take on a a template of a man who has true compassion for his members 
Lord bless your people open doors for them and God is watching you are, you are keeping your own needs aside and you are praying Lord there are barren women in my church give them children not for my name's sake for your name's sake Lord that lady there are three ladies in my, in my ministry that have HIV that have cancer that have fibroid they are going to die I intercede for them Lord I found out that in one week I counseled 18 brothers suffering from masturbation I attacked that spirit that's how to pray that's the heart of a true shepherd they may not see you when you are doing this but let me tell you you see ba, this thing we do you can't fake it for too long if you are not doing these things in reality in reality a day will come it will become clear because you will be tired no human being can pretend forever are we together Again, Sing one more time. Again, Is your life changing are you becoming relevant to society those you are living around can they look at your life and say Kai all of a sudden promise is a blessing to everybody in this area or are you still the same nuisance that people have been having it must change say it must change I've watched people and I've seen by the grace of God how God has transited their lives. My own life, I look at my life and I wonder and I'm grateful to God for the passion. I have, I have, I have such a hunger for transformation. I have no loyalty for error. The moment I find out that there is something in my life that is impeding my growth, I wave it goodbye forever, no matter how long I've been with it. I am malleable to change. I'm not too arrogant to change. I'm not too arrogant to tell God I'm sorry. I'm not too arrogant to tell God I can be better. Is God already speaking to us tonight? Because I want you to change. This is what needs to change. This is what needs to change. Your mindset. I'll get to the teaching shortly. But this is, I'm preparing the ground. This is what I'm supposed to talk about. It, 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 that's where it's all leading to, really. My message tonight is on repentance. And it's not your idea of repentance. That was the one message Jesus brought. Repent. 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 Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, please, verse 10. See, listen, Koinonia, hear me. You will thank me for these things you are receiving today. Believe me when five years from now ten years from now you turn back and look at your children and you look at the sufferings and the ignorance of men and the result of their ignorance you will just get down on your knees your remaining lifetime will be spent in tears of gratitude lord how did i escape he said how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation the darkness will come upon the earth you can't pray it away but there is a key that exempts you and this is it 6 verse 10 
thy kingdom come jesus was teaching them how to pray and he says thy kingdom come three words that have governed my life thy kingdom come and he tells us how to bring the kingdom he says thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven hallelujah now please listen very important for you to get this foundation the word kingdom is actually a combination of two words the king's domain the king's domain the king's domain the word kingdom means the domain of a king a kingdom is a sphere of influence a territory where the influence and the culture of a king is permitted to find expression without restraint that's a kingdom any sphere any territory where the influence and the culture of a king is permitted to find expression without restraint it's called a kingdom the domain of a king please listen i'll just connect what i've said so far with the teaching tonight and then we'll pray because i want us to be kingdom people there are many gospels that we preach and there are many gospels seven of them the bible teaches but the gospel jesus brought to the church is the gospel of the kingdom a revelation of the influence of christ the king upon a territory and jesus is teaching them how to connect to the heart of the father he says when you pray let it be that your desire should be lord your kingdom your influence the same way it is in heaven you know why heaven is the way it is because the kingdom of god the kingdom has been established the rule the reign the culture the way of life the modus operandi of god heaven is governed only by his ideas no suggestion no addition no improvement the wisdom of god is the map the compass that governs the activities in heaven are we together now so heaven is the way it is the arrangement of the 20 and 4 elders the streets of gold right there are 12 things the bible reveals to us about heaven one of them is the appearance of the throne room are we together now the 20 and 4 elders the angels the seven lampstands christ being in the midst of the lampstand the voices in heaven all kinds of arrangements the center of heaven is the throne room that's where life emanates that's where the rod of his justice that's where the rod of leadership proceeds from no rebellion the angels that rebelled were casted down to the earth perfect justice yet perfect love and so when you watch the inhabitants in heaven they don't guess how to live there is order the 20 and 4 elders know when to bow one doesn't just say kai i'm tired of waiting i remove my crown after all all of us will remove our crown there is excellence are we together the atmosphere of heaven is unrestrained there is no loyalty to two people no possibility of rebellion christ the center of heaven so there's no lack why because the ideas of god who is the fountain of wisdom is what permeates that environment are we together there is no hate they don't do capitalism they don't do democracy all your Karl marx kinds of leadership and governance they don't do it there's nothing called the masses in heaven are we together there's no such thing as that no political parties no lack no ownership in heaven only access ownership is a sign of rebellion in heaven nobody owns anything the citizens of heaven only have access are we together now jesus is saying if you want your life to look like heaven listen he says pray lord your influence let it come 
to my life let it come to this system transfer everything that makes heaven heaven to find expression here and this is the secret he says his influence will find expression when his will everybody say will change that word will to idea change that word will to word his word change that word will to convictions change that word will to ideologies when your ideologies are executed in the earth your influence will come when my life permits your ideas then your kingdom can find expression in my life is god speaking to us tonight so the level to which i achieve personal excellence in every area of my life is the degree to which i relinquish my idea about life and i embrace that of heaven it is foolish for me to come from my culture right i come from a culture of warriors and warriors are arrogant people because they are always fighting animals and fighting enemies are we together now many of us come from different cultures now we come to god and god is saying i want my kingdom to come into your life this lack this pain your marriage is not working because all of you are bringing cultural ideas i'm from Ibrom. he's from lagos lagos and Ibrom is clashing what is he producing disaster and God is saying, both of you, leave it, embrace my ideas. Are we together now? Now, it's difficult because we hold on to the things we've known. It defines our sense of relevance. But God is saying, if you let it go, make my will be done. My ideas, my concepts. Then you will find out that your life will change. It no longer will be an issue of Igbo or Hausa or yoruba or south south right or middle belt no another culture has superimposed the limitation of your culture your state of origin notwithstanding so we can come from different regions but the operation of the kingdom within us is the same because we have relinquished our culture and embraced the culture of the kingdom please listen this is very important when we talk about the word of god that's what was translated there will is from the same greek word the root word is logos and logos means the thoughts of a man the thoughts what a man is thinking his ideas that cries out for execution so when you call jesus the living word you're actually calling him the living logos means that the he is the manifestation of the thoughts of the father whatever the father was thinking jesus was executing are we together that was what made him a perfect son so now he tells you embrace my ideas about finances embrace my idea about the anointing you don't get the anointing by going to a stream and going to go and bath we're watching a program in the afternoon how that a man went to the stream to look for money and he was walking on water physically and then a spirit came out of the river and gave him a ring that he wore for money those are stupid ideas perverted ideas but there is a way there is a way that god can give a man are we together when you come into christ when you come into the kingdom the assignment for you is in one word and it's called repent repentance repentance is the journey that makes men like christ repentance has nothing to do necessarily with sin like i'm a i'm a sinner the word repent is a word that is a process it's not just an act that happens in one minute repentance is a journey repentance is a process Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 John began to herald that message and when Jesus came Matthew 4 verse 17 he says from that time on please read Jesus began to preach 
What was his message? What was his message? Repent. Why should you repent? For the influence of heaven is within your reach right now. Change. I have come with the keys to give you. The word at hand means is within your grasp. You have been praying and saying, Lord, bring your ideas to us. Now I have come as a representation of the government you so desire. Now repent. Because the kingdom, it wasn't just an issue of heaven or hell. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven, the influence of the father, the life that makes heaven heaven is embodied in a person and he has come to you. So the first step to repentance is accepting the ministry of the one who is proposing it. That's Jesus. But that's not the last step. It is only the first step. The first step to repentance is an acknowledgement that you are lost outside of him and outside of his ways. The Bible says we all like sheep, right? We all like sheep have gone astray. He said every one of us have gone his own ways. Like a sheep without a shepherd. Wasting my life away with all kinds of ideas. Now he comes to me. And he says Joshua Selman. Repent. So I come to him. The first step. Lord Jesus. I relinquish ownership over my life. I have tried. And I've done everything I know to do. I've lived my life with my own ideas. But I hand over my life to you. Right? From beginning to the end. It will always be. Always be you Jesus. So I answer what you call an altar call. And a man of God guides me through a prayer of faith. Right? And I accept his substitutionary sacrifice. And let me tell you what happens to many of us. After service, you just look pious and you carry your Bible. And then you don't know what else. No. That is the beginning of the journey to true transformation. Repentance is the key to transformation. You don't repent by saying, I repent. You repent by embracing new ideas. That's the true character of repentance. Repentance means I have seen another light. I have seen another paradigm. I've seen another path that is greater than what my father taught me. Greater than what my mother taught me. Greater than what ABU taught me. Greater than what Nigeria taught me. Greater than what Africa taught me. And I am willing to follow. The language of repentance is follow me. Follow me and I will make you. Pastor Alpha, follow me. Carry your ministry along. Carry your wife along. Carry your son along. I will make you. Don't come made. You, you cannot be made. I will make you. The mission is trust me enough. Even when you don't understand what I'm doing, believe that my thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil. Right? I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. I will go. Yes, Lord. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. So, he leads you through a path that you have never followed before. And he says, everybody follows this road. But this is where I'm taking you to. You, you've never passed it before. But you trust him. You trust him. Lord, I have never sown a seed before in my life. But now you are teaching me this is the key to prosperity. I trust you. I've lived my entire life in fornication. I don't know how to not live in fornication. But I repent. I embrace a new idea. Now see, the way God works, all you need to do is receive. The grace for performance comes from him. You do not have the power. This is the true picture of grace. The ability.
ability that backs your decision the decision is a product of your willpower but the grace to live in that decision is what is supplied after the decision is made so i don't have any power in myself but i decide i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing choose don't worry about how you will go just choose so you choose lord i choose your way satan hears you causes hear you the backgrounds the foundations of your father's house hear you and god says now that you have chosen the spirit of grace <laughs> ay, 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 ay. is the holy ghost spirit of the living god you're the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings you're the holy ghost seal of the age to come changing everything brothers and sisters you just made a decision Kabbalakata. all of a sudden an ability you never had suddenly comes on you how shall these things be seeing that i do not know a man he said the power of the highest you can't stop fornication by yourself you can't stop drinking by yourself yours is to choose i align with you and grace comes upon you all of a sudden power strength capacity you watch the things that once swallowed you and you can nod at it and go back to sleep because you chose we never choose because we say i don't have the power to make it happen god says choose prosperity you say but god i graduated with that class that's not your business just choose 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 and the grace comes and that grace appears unto men and can teach men it can teach men it can teach men how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way it's a part only the holy ghost knows how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly like eagles when you don't know the wind it's power and work in you changing everything that's what god is doing tonight swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit that's what he's doing for you don't you know in his arms are the keys to eternal life like he's teaching you a little here a little there soon your day will dawn his hard work in you changing everything line upon line precept upon precept you are changing it will not happen in one day the accuser of the brethren will come to you and raise his ugly head to tell you if if the hand of god is upon your life why are you not moving as fast as you should move right and then you keep moving like a seed that is planted you begin to grow and blossom and your life becomes a marvel and a wonder repentance please hear me is the key repentance is the pathway that leads you to transformation the moment you get born again your next assignment is the journey of transformation and it's only done when the word of god is accurately divided the word does not change people the word explained received and understood is what changes people don't you think that you are hearing the word it changes you know when the word of god is explained like i'm teaching now and you are saying wow i never saw it this way i thought it was just about heaven and hell i thought it was just about being a christian i didn't know that that's only the beginning to the journey i now see why i should come for koinonia every week it's a progression of the training are we together now yes it's a progression of the training every 
every time they go from strength to strength they go from strength to strength as many as appear before God in Zion they grow from strength to strength it says thou will show us the path of life for in thy light we see light so he exposes you while you are working well now your prayer life is at work now you are praying in tongues right now you are studying the word of god but you find out that there are all kinds of devilish things tying you down you thought they were not there but you are seeing patterns in your life that represent covenants of darkness then another teaching comes teaching you the mystery of true genuine deliverance that can cut you away from your past the same way the red sea divided egypt and israel forever they came out of egypt but egypt could still catch up with them but something happened an encounter that had to do with water and that was the end of it he said these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever are we together whereas you thought that all there is to life is just to work hard now you are finding out that there is a place for intelligent work there is a place for the favor of god and there is a place for prophecy believe in the lord your god and you shall be established nobody has ever really truly spoken over your life and what you are doing and you say this is the missing link i have studied the books I am a tiger but there is no prophetic word and you get that word and it changes your life brothers and sisters i wish god will open my heart so that you will see how much i crave that every one of us will step into perfection step into this realm of absolute maturity in the spirit a realm where the encumbrances of life have no power over you thank you see let me tell you something I have lost the ability to be discouraged honestly I know you think it's pride if I tell you I'm discouraged if I tell you I'm frustrated will I be true to you will I be sincere to you from my heart to tell you I'm discouraged because I found a stream of endless supply of grace <laughs> I found my way I found your word and I did eat it it was a joy and rejoicing to my soul it's not just saying I can cram scripture Psalm chapter 1 verse 2 Psalm chapter 3 verse 4 blah, 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 and then they are clapping whoa, whoa, that's not the word that's memory verse thy word have I hidden like an endangered species it has framed my conviction I cannot think any other way I don't think like a Nigerian I don't think like a northerner I think like a citizen of the kingdom because I truly am I'm not pretending it it's the truth there are some things that are no longer realities for me and my job is to take away those things those illusions out of your mind i can't think failure i can't it's not all this confession i can't think I'm, i i mean it seriously i mean it where will all the revelations of the mysteries of the kingdom run to when i'm thinking failure how will it happen don't say ah you are lucky god no 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 take everything i have today give me time it will come back i found the key i found the key they know not neither will they understand he said they grope in darkness and so the earth is out of course it is not about the government it is not about satan it is not about witches and wizards it is about disalignment it is about rebellion it is about pride and lack of meekness it is about inconsistency hallelujah I challenge you in this place there is a realm a path which no fowl has seen job said the whelps of the lion has not gotten there 
by the grace of God and all honor to the glory of God this great ministry God is building with his own hands is being built by wisdom it's not built by luck it's not built by guess did you know while I was seated here and the worship team were ministering some of you would have noticed I was in an open vision almost all through the worship time and I was seeing the tent that's the next level of the ministry I was seeing the tent I was seeing everything and I was watching some of the same people some I didn't see them somewhere they're still doing worship the sound everything and I was just in that atmosphere it's not like I was watching I was there so how can I now get up and lie to you that I'm discouraged that's what I'm trying to tell you it will be a lie you see what do you know that gives you confidence yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says I fear no evil why for thou art with me then he says thy rod and thy staff they comfort me they comfort me koinonia I bring you a word tonight your project of transformation must be taken seriously the same way you put a building project you must transform it there is almost no koinonia message that is not in my system ask those who are close to me I listen to it all the time my phone is full of messages I'm listening I don't trust my mistakes I don't trust my errors I have God has helped me but I'm still a long way to go compared to where I'm coming from and compared to where he's taking me thank God but compared to where Christ is taking me and taking this ministry we are only one step out of the cave so while on one side I can pat my shoulders and say well done transformation continues I don't have time for distraction I don't listen to nonsense not rubbish gist not rubbish movies not rubbish shows I don't have that time there is an urgency there is a generation depending upon my stability in the spirit are you ready to give yourself that kind of urgency hallelujah transformation tomorrow we are traveling we're in Joss again for a meeting all through from there to Mina we're traveling everywhere all of those people are waiting to receive am I just going to keep giving them what I gave them last year two years ago or am I going to come with something fresh from the throne you don't receive from God the way you enter a fast food no you must pay attention allow his word change you if you study your Bible just for preaching you will not be an epistle of your message it will be clear with time that your message has not become a persuasion God is my witness I believe this I will die believing it it is the principle upon which I run my life it is it has nothing to do with me being spiritual my entire life runs on this I don't argue with it it is the template for my life I'm not just a Christian because I'm going to heaven I'm not just a Christian because I have ministry responsibilities this word is a lamp to my feet I use it like a torchlight taking myself out of darkness bringing myself to the way of light that's what has brought the anointing that's why I respect the Holy Spirit so much you hear me talk a lot about him I'm not copying men of God I'm not copying Benny Hinn okay three cool man he has revealed himself to me he's the fountain of wisdom he will give you wisdom that is bigger than your age he will give you wisdom that is bigger than your background I tell you your weaknesses are swallowed up in his presence every limitation becomes uh, irrelevant when you stand with his wisdom now you see the trouble is you may not manifest what is showing you all at once so chances are that people will not take you seriously but give him time give him time give my God time give my God time I know this God there is no one like this God believe me I know what I'm saying there is no one like
like my God. I love your ways and I love your word. There is no one like my God. There is no one like my God. There is no one like my God. <laughs> I tell you, sometimes I feel like busting, tearing myself into do you know why because i have seen god's system of justice my background may not be fair my parents may not have been fair on me are we together situations and circumstances may not be fair but the word of god is a neutralizer it vetoes everything and it balances your life I pray that you will believe what I'm saying. I pray that you will have this passion and change your life and laugh at your mountains. Not pray about them. Laugh at them. They are a mirage. While we look at the things, I'm telling you, every mountain in your life, trust me, Koinonia, I know what I'm saying. It's a mirage. It's a mirage. It's a mirage. When David stood before Goliath, he said who is this uncircumcised not who is this mighty man he never called goliath a mighty man he said who is this uncircumcised philistine he said god who delivered me from the lion and the bear this day not tomorrow will give me your head he said i will throw you down i will use your own sword and i will give your head to the birds there is something you can see in the secret place see let me tell you something when you grow in confidence of the word there are some things you no longer will pray about believe me because sometimes your prayer is just a succor to manage your fears it becomes unnecessary you just lie down and sleep the boat was about capsizing jesus was sleeping how could he die the resurrection and the life how could he die there was no possibility of death in him the disciples could die when he got up he looked at the storm and he said shalom be still koinonia i want your life to bear fruit please hear me i want your life to bear fruit many have walked this path they made mistakes they never got there but I'm glad to tell you there are some people who walked and went there. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Listen. Though we are few, but not many, we are surrounded by many who have crossed that way. You are not the first to cross the river from lack to prosperity. You are not the first to be mightily used by God. The Bible is full of ordinary men. They have crossed that river and they left their footprints. He said, ask for the ancient paths. Don't guess. Millionaires have come and gone. There are billionaires that lost money and became beggars and rose back to become billionaires. They left their footprints. There are men of God who have lost members and came back to that status. There are men who have lost anointings and come back. There is nothing you want that somebody has not done before. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before one more time though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river listen the many may not come from your family in your family nobody has crossed that river but there are still those who have crossed it are you hearing what i'm saying anybody that tells you god cannot use a young man 
though we are few you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song you'll be singing for when you overcome holy is the lord when all the pain is over holy is when you finally break through to that place of destiny they may mock you now but continue with the word of god they may not understand but i'm telling you you will have the last laugh trust me years ago i was lying down on a mattress on the ground and i said lord i want to affect my generation i want to change lives i don't want to live like the people i've seen in my family and my background i want to be different and the lord told me something it was a secret he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you i have followed him closely and today in a measure i have seen his faithfulness he doesn't lie we are just too impatient to wait for his word to come to pass believe me brothers and sisters there are those who god has given marital breakthrough you are not the first there are people who have gotten access to the mysteries of the kingdom don't act like you are the first it has happened before william seymour alexander the way catherine kuhlman Emphy mcpherson they are they are the clouds of witness great men in nigeria babalola archbishop benson idahosa there are so many there are fathers of faith who are alive brothers and sisters believe me they crossed that river some of them went through all kinds of obstacles and they crossed it he will bless you just pay attention if you do this i'm telling you your life will change like night and day only praise can take you higher to the place where you can see the father face to face oh my life will never be small see one more time hey, only praise can take me higher There are very successful people in this place listen you may see everybody here most people here are young people make no mistakes there are millionaires in this place not by prophecy i mean people now here and now not it will happen no there are people who are very anointed but we all bring ourselves here and humble ourselves to listen to the word you know why because god is changing people there are people seated inside outside doctors professors intelligent people but they have come your life will never be the same so when someone looks at you and says you are not growing spiritually don't even pray about it just leave the person time is a revealer time is a revealer time is a revealer some of you would not have believed what i'm telling you now if i told you 10 years ago 10 years to come i'll still be saying what i'm saying but it will come with more results now and you will listen Bible says arise shine for your light is come he told us this is our year of multiplied grace and influence it's not a cliche ah when I say get up get up when I say move when I say act when I say get up I'm not saying stand up I'm saying it's time to shake that dust and stand up arise and shine for your light is come shake mediocrity shake frustration 
shake yesterday and his pain and say no i saw in my visions that anointing i must step into that realm i saw myself my shadow lifting wheelchairs not headaches no i'm a city not a village on a hill i'm on my way rising i may not have all the evidences now but give me time arise he spoke unto me and the word picked me up and set me upon my feet when he says get up when he says move when he says run when he says fly hey only place can take me higher to the place where i can see the father help me face to face turn to three or four people and prophesy to them tell them i'm a wonder about to manifest i'm not motivating you honestly speaking tell them i'm a wonder i'm a wonder i may have a faulty background but there is an anointing 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 hallelujah we are going to pray listen please look up everybody the worst thing you can do to yourself is to reject the word of God the worst thing you can do to yourself is to ignore teachings get a notebook 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 write have personal times of teaching not just devotion every day with jesus five minutes you are reciting the prayers you are running you don't grow that way give god time and he will give you a life of victory give god time he will give you a life that is enviable give god time he will turn you into beulah and have ziba give god time he will make you a bank of the anointing prayer point number one lord i give you time i'm tired of giving you my remaining time when i waste my time doing other things please pray lift your voice going on and pray lord i give you time i give you time i give your word time yeah. Lord, we give you time. We give you time in Koinonia. Time to make us. Time to break us. Time to mold us. Time to build us. Time to perfect us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, in any way I have been negligent and nonchalant about the ministry of strategic transformation i repent and i receive grace lift your voice and pray if friday is your only time of transformation you are not growing enough Hallelujah.
Romans chapter 12. Let's establish it. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And then Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, please. We're establishing the last prayer point. Let's read it together. One, two, read. It's projected. And be not conformed to this. The word world is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern that comes with this age. Read on. But be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mentality, your mentality, your perceptions. Then it says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of your mind. Repentance. The pathway that leads to transformation. Dropping old ideas to pick up the new. That are consistent with heaven's way of doing things. Philippians chapter 2 please from verse 5. Let's read together. One to read. Stop. The word let is the word permit. Permit this mindset. This mentality. To be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. He had an understanding. There was a way he interpreted life. That made him victorious let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus let's look at Philippians chapter 4 please last verse Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 actually 7 to 9 but let's see let's just focus on 8 okay let's let's read from 7 down to 9 one to read and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your heart and minds through christ jesus verse 8 finally joshua selman whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue moral excellence if there be any praise think 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 on these things not failure not defeat not i am a nobody not it's not for people like us no think on these things as a pastor think on pastoring a flourishing ministry let people tell you ah it's not about crowd no problem may god bless you with your revelation but for me god so loved the world he sent me not to go and pastor three or four people. He sent me to influence a generation. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Father, walk on my mentality. Something in my mind is keeping me poor. Something is keeping me not anointed. Something is keeping me out of revelation. Lift your voice. Something I do not know about excellence is responsible for mediocrity something i do not know about the anointing is responsible for lack of testimonies in my church something i do not know about leadership is frustrating me in my organization something i do not know about the economic system of the kingdom is keeping me poor change my mentality sisters pray something about my mentality is stopping my husband from coming to me lord change it something about my mentality is stopping my wife from coming to me something about my mentality is stopping good friends destiny help us from coming into my life show me oh god and change it Hallelujah.
sit down if you can. Those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3, 16. I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina If there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly augustina the lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what i'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because i'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the lord is telling me release augustina release augustina release augustina release augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a whole family that came. There is a family God wants me to minister to. You are five. Five people. I don't know if there is a mother. I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you are five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world 
for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. And please don't be confused. There is a name. That son is called Jesus. Because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father. But the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten. Right? until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets, Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No. Preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding. The word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another. Please just be patient with me. This family or minister. Are we together now? Turning from one direction to the other. But the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ. He said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And this is what the apostle said. Repent for the remission of your sins. So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son. 
you laid aside your majesty you gave up everything for me you suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Hallelujah. So he gave like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen jesus did not just come please i want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray jesus did not just come to show us how god looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created he was invincible the Bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 no, no. i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self-ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of christ a life that is crucified with christ are we together now and then the bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago we know it as the passion of the christ it started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him john chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now 
It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they're all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name aaron kelvin just get somewhere that they can sit around and i'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir i offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is, I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? Watching. All kinds of things have told you they love you, but they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First, stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away. In exchange. The Bible says he was rich. But he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion. But he laid it aside. I hope you know. That they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33 year old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still will not be able to take it see listen 
if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and i invite someone and while you are about to drive him i say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what i want to teach us when jesus went to hell and met satan a discussion transpired and satan said remember adam and he said i don't remember adam i am him don't you see this is adam and satan knew it was true because only adam had the right to collect the key no other man could collect the key and so he went as the second adam and said you killed adam and every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read down what i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the bible says according to the book of hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health 
and all of this because you are a just God your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the Bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak I will not fight it but remember that I not only paid the price I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ it's an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life 
you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye, the multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice, you may get intelligence, you may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have, a, what do we call it, a, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end you, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life dear is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health 
that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is god who is at work in us to will and to do so it's working the moment the life enters you it's like a genetic mutation it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception 
what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grope in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God, speaking according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left, but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we are already together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if Sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy so they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare 
and by warfare they mean a consistent never ending contention both are wrong are we together this is prophecy but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do but I have a role to play nobody gets saved just because Jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh-huh the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when i'm tithing i'm not acting under the law i'm not trying to do something i am responding there is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my own, think god's life and all its content is the way the life of god that can become any and everything any and everything christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done 
there still remains a rest and then he says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life but it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it at a response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting god for all kinds of things here i'm teaching you how to get results tonight god is not a herbalist there is a participation a jimmy this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this, his response now he's standing up it's a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah a jimmy do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god look for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 
32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah. is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am Hallelujah If the father Did not give Jesus It's like a man Listen It's like a man who vowed to punish every offender And he saw his wife And the guy said I'm a just person And he punished his wife then somebody throws a and say, oh God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you. Listen. If it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then I assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night yeah. hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say Lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can God do it listen don't don't make that foolish statement tonight i i was praying on the tonight before i came here i was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding if you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when i met her the devil was almost destroying her life had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby she shared her testimony here supernaturally 
that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed satan is a deceiver he comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer i want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 
respond respond and the bible says peter held his hand and she leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak i put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not god will not just get up and act listen it was god that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died for God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming.
hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away no man condemns you the mercy the mercy Look at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast 
so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on Till my answer comes, I won't give up, Lord, I won't give up, I'll keep pressing on, until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i'll begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life hallelujah now please begin to pass your request very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness i tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why i'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit, 
Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain Let it rain Would you open The floodgates of heaven pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen, is that the people, they are not on glasses. Their dentitions are still exact. They don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife Ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures 
I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Keturah. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees. And we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I, was, I don't know if I was sharing with them. I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how I, as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands. And we got to the place. We'll show you the video. And we snapped. And I said, I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years. Alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. And I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, it's, you can be 190 and not be able to talk. But you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families. 
altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shape baba kata altars 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 right now shake it in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it back at is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now 
is changing right now is changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the Lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies I tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you Lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Father we turn go ahead and pray Lord my request is turned into a testimony I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place in the name of jesus we command the foundations of the earth we command the firmaments we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of god's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of jesus mighty and everlasting god standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus and end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward in the name of jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of jesus we thank you lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can I saw a spirit 
and, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shekete Kappa. Shekhe Rosata. The kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me 
I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person and I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a man too. The Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her. Like a garment you can wear it, I pray. That honor that brings receptivity, receive it right now. Oh, come on, your amen is not loud enough. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land. You know what a delightsome land is? Well desired. In other words, at any point you are seen, you are invited. I don't know who has disqualified you, but I pray for you. They may use your background. They may use whatever. Let grace qualify you tonight. Let grace qualify you tonight. Koinonia, I pray for you. Honor that you have never seen in your life. From even people who can give birth to you, begin to receive it. Strange honor in high places. Strange honor in high places. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give God all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you have started, listen, something just came in my heart. Whatever you have started that ended prematurely, because this what I'm there is an anointing for what I'm telling you. Whatever you start, I don't care what it is, whether it is relationship or whatever, and it ended, but not by God. We put life back to it right now. I say it again. Whatever you started that ended but not by God by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God praise. My goodness. I wish we had time. I wish we had time. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. For watching in the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall, let the rain begin to fall, let the rain.